Victory, failure, setbacks, and breakthroughs. All wrapped up into a single season under a brand new head coach. For the last five seasons, the Warriors have only gotten better and better. The Sterling College 2017 team was one of the most successful in school history as they became only the second team to earn the title of KCAC Conference Champions. However, at the conclusion of the season, head coach Chuck Lambert retired, and the baton was passed down to coach Chase Hansen. This will mark Hansen's sixth year on the coaching staff. No longer an offensive coordinator, Hansen will have to take the adjustment to his new position as head coach. Now with a new head coach, a team full of young players, and all eyes on Sterling, They'll set out with the goal to have another successful season under their new leader, Chase Hansen. Just as my career at Bethel uh, continued and then, I guess, ended, um, I just couldn't imagine my life without football. Um, but then an opportunity came here at Sterling. Andy Lambert called me, um, and I had an opportunity to, to come over here and, and start fresh. The season opener for the Warriors was a home game against Avila University. In a back and forth game, the two teams battled it out in front of a full crowd, keeping the energy and excitement going strong throughout the night. In the final 60 seconds of the game, Avila found a way to score, giving the Eagles a 38-34 lead. Sterling with one last shot to score with 4.5 seconds left on the clock to take the field. A final pass attempt by starting quarterback Eric Butler would sail out of the end zone as Avila would use their fourth quarter comeback to defeat Sterling 38-34. Next stop for the Warriors, Southwestern College. Southwestern may have taken the lead in the first half, but the Warriors were right on their heels and working hard. An incredible pick from Braden Shulin would hold off the mound builders, and the first quarter ended, Southwestern still leading 10-6. Other than one score after the half by Southwestern, all scores for the rest of the game came from Sterling as they put up a final of 43-20. Hansen's first win as head coach was celebrated with his players, with a Gatorade bath after the victory. Coach Hansen would then start to prepare his team for their matchup against the Kansas Wesleyan University Coyotes. Sterling's defense was put to the test as they were able to hold Kansas Wesleyan to only one touchdown in the first quarter. The same cannot be said about the second, however. The Coyotes had a big second quarter putting up 21 points while the Warriors scored their only touchdown of the night. With a final score of 42 to seven, Coach Hansen had to find a way to pick up his team after their second loss of the season. I think the biggest key for, for any football team is, you know, will, will you come together when adversity hits? You know, what, what's going to happen when you, when you throw an interception, when the defense rides up, when the defense gives up a touchdown, when the offense rides up? You know, it's, it's all about stepping up for each other. The next two weeks were very successful for Coach Hansen and his Warriors. In their home game against Friends University, it was back and forth battle for these rivals. They played from both sides of the ball and would end the half with Sterling leading 23-13. The exciting conclusion came with an attempted two-point conversion, but Tuan Collymore would break up the pass. The Warriors had their second victory of the season with a 43-34 score. The following week brought the Warriors to Leavenworth, Kansas to face the Spires of the University of St. Mary. The Warriors dominated the first quarter, shutting out the Spires with a score of 31-0 going into the half. In the third quarter, St. Mary would look to start it off right with the opening kickoff, but a Spire fumble would find its way into the hands of Braden Shulin as the Warriors would return the fumble to the three-yard line to start the second half with a chance to score. Eric Haynes would get a two-yard run to score and make it 38-0. Later in the third, St. Mary would go for it on fourth down, but Kwame Sexton would intercept the ball in the end zone and return it to the 40-yard line to set up the Warriors' offense. Eric Butler would lead the Warriors to a 44-12 win over the Spires. Next, the Warriors would play host to Ottawa at home for their homecoming game. The Braves would start strong, but the Warriors would take a lead 21-14 at the end of the first quarter. The teams continued to go back and forth and battle it out, as the Braves would score quickly, but missed an extra point, and this would leave the Warriors up 21-20. With the Warriors looking to extend their lead, a fumble would be recovered by Ottawa and turned into another score for the Braves. After a failed two-point conversion by Ottawa, only 13 seconds left to play in the first half, Daryl Terrell would add another rushing score from five yards out, allowing the Warriors to take a 28-26 lead. The second half picked up right where the first ended, with both teams doing everything they could to do to score and take the lead. The score continued all the way until the final minutes of the fourth quarter. With the game coming down to the wire, Sterling was up 47-41. 
the Warriors' defense was working in overdrive, but it wouldn't be enough to stop the Braves. With just seconds left in the game, Ottawa would score on a touchdown as time expired, and the Braves would defeat the Warriors 48-47 to in heartbreaking fashion. It was heartbreaking for our guys, and you know those guys put everything they could into that game. Um, it was a tough one to swallow, um, just to see those guys being emotional after the game, and so it kind of hits you in the gut. Um, embrace it, and you know our tagline is the "Don't flinch." Well, it's hard sometimes. It's hard not to flinch. This devastating loss definitely had a lasting effect on the Warriors as they went to lose their next two games against Bethany College, 35 to 14, and Tabor College, 34 to 0. During the matchup against Tabor, late in the game, Coach Hansen made a decision. Trying to energize his team and get things going, he put in second-string quarterback Ethan Richardson in place of Eric Butler. Richardson finished with four completions for 35 yards in the air, but the Warriors would stay scoreless for the day. After three losses in a row, the Warriors headed into a bye week. With a record of 3-4, and four, Coach Hansen and his team would be on the hunt for a successful end to their rocky season. After a week of rest, Coach Hansen and the Warriors looked to host McPherson College. It would be the final home game of the season as well as senior day for Sterling. The game started right for the Warriors, scoring on their opening drive. McPherson would only score early in the second quarter and cut into the Warriors' lead, but a block extra point by Tuan Collymore would make it 20-12 Sterling. The half ended with Sterling leading 34-12 against the Bulldogs. With a positive change of pace for the Warriors, they started the second half with a determination to secure the win. A two-yard rushing touchdown by Daryl Terrell gave the Warriors their largest lead of the game in the third quarter. After a late score by the Bulldogs in the fourth, the game ended with Sterling on top, 41-18. With a record of 4-5, and five, the Warriors prepare to face Bethel College, Coach Chase Hansen's alma mater. On the last Saturday of the year, both teams ran out on the field, and Sterling came out aggressive and took an early lead over Bethel. By the end of the first half, with great plays from both defense and offense, the Warriors led 27-14. As the Thrushers scored late in the third, they attempted a two-point conversion and were successful, making it a 27-22 game. Holding the Warriors scoreless in the third, the Thrushers put up another score early in the fourth to take the lead, 30-27. A fumble by the Thrushers would fall into the hands of Billy York and give Sterling the ball midway through the quarter. This led to a key score by Savon Mitchell Ford to make it 34-30. With just under eight minutes to play left in the game, both teams exchanged turnovers and scrambled to score. With just six minutes left to play in the fourth, the Warriors battled to score a touchdown or a field goal before time expires. However, the Threshers would come up with key stops of their own, forcing the Warriors to make tough plays. Sterling would be forced to turn the ball over on downs. With time running out, Bethel would run out the final seconds of the clock, earning the win over Sterling, 36-34. The Sterling College Warriors finished with a record of 4-6 and six for the 2018 season. It was a rebuilding season for the program, and they were faced with adversity from all directions and still showed resilience despite the outcome of the season. It was a, it was a long season, um, and, and we, we went through a lot of adversity, whether it was injuries or, you know, uh, you know tough games. You know, just, you just feel like you, you left something out there, you know, that your season isn't defined by wins and losses, so... You don't coach football just to, to go 10-0 and 0 every year, you know, that's that's not what you do. You, you do it for the relationships that you build, um, the growth that you see, and, and that's where I think the, the exciting part is, you know, we're ready for next year, you know, we're hungry, we're ready to go. This isn't the end, not even close.